fabulous shop. And hello and welcome. Q Sports International and Predator Group present the Pro Billiard Series, the Michigan Open. This is the third event of this year, which will culminate in the Predator World 10 Ball Invitational this coming March in Las Vegas. 64 players playing 10 ball, two or three sets to four. Shootout if they're tied. Keep in mind that in the final 16, that third set will come in. Winter breaks, three foul ruled, 30 second time clock, $75,000 prize fund with a 22 5 first prize. It's a first round match, and I'm this is George Tejad joined by Tim DeRuder. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. It's great to have you here. We are in Grand. We are in Battle Creek, Michigan. Yeah, not the Grand Rapids. That's no. where I flew into, guys. Sorry. Better course, and a newcomer, Mikhail Olek. He's from Switzerland, but playing playing with the Polish team. He's 34 years old. Feder, I don't think Feder needs an introduction. That's Feder Gorst. I was looking over his uh, leaderboard, mini leaderboard uh, uh, winnings. He was first. He's first this year. He is. He was second last year in all the money, and so far this year, what are we in? Uh, almost October. He's won over $173,000 just in uh, uh, what's listed. Not including some of the other stuff. Yeah, he... Uh, Not a bad player. He knows how to get the money. Yeah. He's, he's got quite the resume. This young man right here is probably playing as good as, if not much better, than most players in the world. Well, and he's off to a good start here. Made a ball on the break and nice position on the one ball. Just that two ball looks like he might have gotten a little ugly. So he's trying to get straight and hooked himself behind the nine. That's unusual. Yeah, so but he is jumping. So is he going for the two ball in the side or in the corner? I can't tell from the angle we, we look at this. I think it's going to go right into the side pocket. Call this extension. Yeah, it looks to be going right to the side. Now, that's quite the contortion and still have a foot on the floor. He is one of the best with that jump cue, folks. One of the best in the world. Yeah, and he got perfect on the four ball. That was probably the toughest part on that shot. So back to work. Now that six ball is still tough, though. We'll need to get almost straight on the five or rather a little angle. If he has a little angle, he might play short rail shape to the side pocket, but he's looking to see where he can go. He likes the side, I think, because in looking, it doesn't go past the 9 or past the 8. Uh, that's about the only available pocket, and the 7 is close by. That's exactly where he played it, too. Oh, well, he did get somewhat straight. It's a stop shot. I don't think he'll do if he's if he's too straight. I don't think he'll do anything but stop it. Just make sure he's not uh, over the eight. Yeah, but still a little uncomfortable start. Now things are not going as yeah nice as he would want to. So stop shot, take a longer eight. When you have a cue ball in the middle of the table, I don't think anything is longer. Everything is good. Well, I'm more saying oh, I, got I like to be close to my work. Kind of like that. Yeah, you could really see how new the cloth still plays. Yes. Really slides of the wheel. So you can see also he's kind of holding his stroke a little bit because... While he was practicing, you could really see him trying to feel the table, mm -hmm. and he was overhitting most of the shots. The cloth rolls rolls fast. The rails are fast, and being new, it slides a little. 
but he at his practice he was doing what a player wants to do is dial in. He had to speed down on the break on his shots, and he takes the first game. John Eman will be racking him. You know, Feder has played in eight of these Predator Pro Billiard Series events since the inception. Uh, so this is his third year now. And those eight events he's played, he won. he's won three. He's the only player to win three so far. He won two in Arizona, one in Ohio. He also, um, he's just gone nuts with just about everything. Fifth in Michigan here last year. Ninth in Puerto Rico, 22. He's just the number one player in the rankings for the Predator Pro Billiard Series. They take the Fargo and the tournament um, results they get points for, and they combine them for a ranking. He's ranked number one. So let's see. He used to like breaking from the side, but he's now changing to the other side, Will. Looking to make the one ball on the side. Came up a little low. The eight goes in and position on the one. Watch him take that cue ball two rails right towards that three that's right by the left side of the cue ball. Right there. <laughs> that's where he wants the cue ball. Now, will he, my question is, will he come between the three six or on the bottom side of the three. Let's take a look. I think he's going to take the gamble and try to land right in between. Well, landing it, yes, but will it come that way? He could. I don't think he can go in between the three and the six. It slides too much. Okay. It's going to open That's up. Said, so that, there's your answer. After two rails, it's going to open up too much. That's why the speed, is the speed good here? Well, he did okay? he, he did always have a backup, though, with a stop shot safe behind the seven. So mm -hmm. he knew as long as he didn't get behind the three, he would be okay. That 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 is actually, technically, that's exactly what uh, a player should look at. For those a lot of you guys out there, in case you don't get the safe, or you don't, don't get the shape, you have the safe, like Tim just said. He's a little in between, though. Yeah, he's now looking at shooting it. The safe now is to where you're shooting, you're banking the two ball into the nine. So it's not really a strong shot here. So he's now cutting and I'm guessing low left. Or is he able to beat the scratch? He's able to kill the ball. Nice. Very nicely done. Yeah, also don't forget, we are using a shot clock here. So it's not like he can take all the time in the world to set himself up. Of course, most of the players nowadays are used to playing the shot clock with all the big events around. The more the shot clock happens, the more everybody gets used to it. But still, some players seem to like it less. This young man is not one of those players. Usually does pretty well around the shot clock. We'll need another good shot here for the six, either in the top right corner or the side pocket. Expecting him to play two rails, short rail and the left long rail. A lot of players would take this 6-10 uh, combo. I don't think better will. I like the way. He's doing this. Yeah, he had such a big area to land in mm -hmm. for either the side or the corner. And I do like shooting to the corner here just because you have such a nice angle to float off the long rail. Is he oh. missing? No, he went the other way. Didn't have to do much with the cue ball. Perfect. 
Yeah, it looks like he got a little straight, well, a little short to be straight on the seven. So he's going to have to move the cue ball back up using the short rail. Ooh. Yeah, I got a, was a little bit afraid to come up short on that nine ball here, but just got there, just, just on the edge. <laughs> My question, will he spin up to the head rail and down or just come straight across and avoid the side pocket? No, I'm taking a long retain. Float the nine in, just get past the side. Just like that, yeah, exactly. As long as you're straight on the 10, you should be okay. And here's this 10 ball for game number two of the first set. Would be two breaking runs in a row. Good start from Fedor Gorst. 2-0 in his opening match here. And Mikhail Oleg from uh, Switzerland has yet to uh, step to the table. 34-year-old plays out of um, the Lucky Panda. Has placed 16th and 17th at the Bucharest Open. Uh, plays a lot of the house tournaments at Lucky Panda. One of his people that he had to win, had to beat to win the tournament was Mario He. He uh, took David Alcaide to the hill in one of his matches he played just recently. So the guy's got some game, but we haven't seen it out of the ch seen him out of the chair yet. Yeah, Lucky Panda, pretty known. Quite some good players that play in the area in that club. A lot of tournaments, a lot of action. So he might be growing really fast. This young mm -hmm. man. I, I have not seen him play yet, so. No. Tough he's to judge. I saw him hitting balls. He's left-handed, and he's traveling with the Polish team, so uh, they will school him. A dry break, it looks like, and a shot on the one, no. but is it open? Yeah, I don't think so. It doesn't look to go in the top right corner, at least. Well, here's a young young left-hander from, uh, from Switzerland. So what do I play here? Probably bank the one ball, two rails down table and get the cue ball behind the five. Um, or can you still float behind the six? I'm going to try to just stop the cue ball on the five and come over by the eight with the one ball, three rails. Yeah, well, I, I'm not sure how much of the one he could catch. If he just barely had to mm -hmm. catch it on the right side, then... Well, it's it's not safe. But it's not horrible either. Like, it didn't really turn out bad for him. No, uh, Federer's got a little bit of a shot here. He can just play the one ball into the deuce and try to come off the rail for on, right on top of the three. Which He's is tough the, with the sliding rails. Not easy to spin back behind the three. Yeah. So and he can't draw at all because he'll go right into the side pocket. I think he could call the two ball, but I don't think he wants to make... The two ball. Ooh. He got him. Well, just a little. He piece. might have. He might have left a edge. little piece, yeah. yeah. And if he can get in between the rail and the two, bump the two out a little bit, get the two and the nine in between. But did he? Oh, he's going rail first. So I am guessing I'm gonna kick this medium speed. Try to get the cue ball towards the two and get the one separated, hopefully behind the 10 or the mm -hmm. eight. Well, he did call the two, and that's quite the shot. Yeah, it was a good shot, actually. How much of the one can he see now? The, one, the 10 ball popped I off the rail. I think he's okay to play the safety, the, the one to the bottom rail, and get the cue ball maybe behind the six. But that's the only thing is if you can... If you get the one close by the 10, uh -huh. you might leave. See, going that shot there, that is a natural scratch. Uh, playing a lot of one pocket. Oh, When well. you bank that shot right there, that cue ball travels to that hole so often. It's such a big scratch. He hit it perfect. Well, he nudged the six ball twice, but it really worked out here. Yes, it did. I think Federer might be trapped. Going over the left long rail looks like there is no way to avoid the nine the one is too it's too steep 
So now, is he, yeah, he's going to try and masse around the five, and then from and the back on the oh one. Yeah, and try to catch the bottom rail by the one. Yeah, I didn't really, yeah. I mean, yeah. he didn't know either, probably. It was, this kind of stuff happens sometimes to where you just, you just don't know. Well, when you're sending the cue ball, like he did, two rails, you know, to try to get behind the six, and you, and you execute what you're trying to do, things happen for you, for the most part. Mission accomplished, getting behind the six. So let's see so what Michael Oleg can do here. Yeah. Polishman living in Switzerland. By the looks of things, he plays rather simple. Well, it's also a pretty tough spot. You know, mm -hmm. it's his first Pro B8 Series event. Yes, it first is. match. Drawing Federgorst. Now you're in the arena. Now you have the crowd. No, it's not a simple thing. He's a 661 Fargo. Compared to an 838 Fargo in his opponent. So do we see any difficulties? I don't really... Holding the cue ball for the five. Well, I might go to the right side, play with a hair of inside, and play mm -hmm. for the five in the left side pocket. There's more room than to play to the left side. Here He's you can get you can get behind the seven this way. He played it well, but he could have gotten yes. behind the seven. If you played it to the right side, you're always gonna see the five ball at least. I think this is key shot though. If he gets straight on the six, things could get annoying. If he can get next to the six on the long rail he can bring the cue ball around and he should be okay one of the one of the things to be concerned about if you're michael olek is um i'm not sure how accustomed he is to playing with a shot clock and being his first pro billiard series tournament in the arena in the pro arena with fetter gorst uh will that come into play Guessing low left for the seven in the left mm. side pocket. Just don't run by the eight. Stayed too high. No, he's okay. Yeah. He's all right. He came off the rail nicely. Oh. Now the nine ball might get into play. He's yeah, got an angle that's going to send him right at it. I don't think he can soft it in, so baby it in, yeah. and have something on the eight. I think he needs to do more. And I'm going in between the nine and the ten. Yeah, I think he's going to try to go between the 8 and the 10. He's drawn the ball like that. He didn't have that much of an angle, so this was risky, though. It was tough to get the cue ball going enough to it get that angle. It, it, you're right, it, and it laid in a place where going between the 9 and the 10 could bring the 10 ball into play. If he hits it, he doesn't have position this way. Uh, both time, I think both ways he was risking it. That was a good shot. Nice control. It's good recovery shot on yep. the eight, and so we're gonna see Michael Oleg on the board. Looks like, oh yes, steady left hander. Nice job, very nice job. All on that uh, two rail safety to get behind the six ball. He was able to save one of the best players in the world with a jump cue and with a kick and balls. Some of the other matches taking place at this time, we got uh, Matt McCone versus Jeff Cole, both American players, Ted Westlake and Joey Tate, one of our up and coming uh, juniors. Rodolfo Ibadloza versus Wojak Chefshek. There's a tough match for Rodolfo. Abdullah al Qatan and Tyler Steyer. Roland Garcia and Matt Ross. Dimitris Lukatos and Timothy Fowler. And our two-time winner at this Michigan event, Aloysius Yap versus Reed Shahib. Shabib, excuse me. 
we have 12 tables plus the stream table, 12 predator 9-foot tables, and then we also have 69 predator 7-foot tables where they're holding the Michigan State Championships. Got over a 1,000 players through the course of this event. Uh, now through Saturday, the women will be playing on Sunday. It will be all women's tournament for you. We have a women's tournament with 48 players. So dry break from Miko and yeah, purposely, Fedor purposely played the one ball into the 2-6 mm -hmm. to open it up. I was wondering what if you stick the cue ball nice behind the 5 and play the 2-6 into the 3 in the side. The, the I don't know how they were lined up. Yeah, 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 yeah I there was one up. shot yeah. that I was looking at. But I think I like this better. Just there is some good, o good opportunities here. Kicking it soft into the 1. Nice hit. Oh, hasn't left a shot on the 1. Main thing. Pool 101. Not a high percentage open shot. shot. Yeah. And he's got to contend with the 6 and the 8 to get position on the 10. Would you even consider, would you consider playing the 10 ball here? No. Because you're going to hit that ball deep, two rails out of that left corner pocket, and your I'm, cue ball is going to stay down here by the 6. I'm banking the 1 ball over to the other short rail. Okay. Top right. Try to get the 4 in between. Oh, he even tried to stun behind the 2. But yeah. there it did turn a little bit more on him with the new cloth you you grab the ball a little bit more well let's let's see his proficiency at the, the jump cue that is a predator air rush the blue one you were talking about Oh, oh trouble, trouble, complain. trouble. Trouble, trouble. <laughs> Look at this. Got him behind the four, the four ball. Well, the only thing I'm wondering is, so we all know he's going to jump this, but how is he going to get on the two ball? Draw it straight back or stop it there. Yeah, so he didn't, he didn't get his jump cue out. He got another break cue. This is a big question mark for me. I don't know exactly what is going on, but I think he's got two break cues there, and he's jumping with one of them. <laughs> I mean, I think he just got on the two ball. Yes, he can see but it. But what a strike. And now this is the key shot to the whole rack. Pocket this ball, and everything seems to just fall into place. One shot leads to the next. And there you saw the new cloth in action. Might still have to move the cue ball here. I'm not sure how much of that. Like if he can hit it he thick, he can might still be able to draw his way out of it to the center of the table. He but he's not, look yeah, he's, he's not looking like he's cueing that low. No, he's just going to okay, come back yeah. a little bit. Yeah. He was aiming like he was going to stun the ball, and then he hit it lower. Look at his speed on that shot. He left himself the perfect angle to go from the four to the five. It's just a little stun. Or follow, whichever he chooses. And now playing to the center of the table to just close the rack out. Well, I might want to be a little bit closer to the six. So does, so does Fetter. Well, just because if you do not get straight on the seven to the side, now you might have to move the cue ball around more to get on the eight. 
I actually, I personally, I, I'm not sure what Federer's going to do here because he has a choice, but I personally would take the cue ball back to where it's at now and play the seven in the corner. Yeah, well, I might stun two rails for the seven in the yeah. right side pocket. He's just going to go the same one. And he did get a little angle up table. So he's either going to cut the eight and take the nine to the left side pocket. It's, an, it's a natural choice to make. He could also try to really force the cue ball around, which I really do not like. He's just going to stop it right there. He's going to stop it and just go up and down and and close out the rack for a three to one score in the first race to four. In this 64 player field, we have 28 players from the U.S., five from Poland, five from Kuwait. Four from Finland and three from Greece, just to give you an idea of some of the players. Uh, when it comes to Fargo, we have 10 players, 800 and over. We have five players, 790 to 800. 19 players from 700 to 790. And 30 players below 700. Give you an idea of... Uh, the depth of talent here today. Well, and Peter Gorst is on the hill. Three to one over Michael Oleg. And with a beautiful jump shot, by the way, on the one. Just imagine jumping a ball, you're maybe a diamond off. Well, you jump it, you make it, and you draw back three diamonds, four diamonds. And just to add fuel to the fire, you only had a sixteenth of an inch to go by the ten ball and make it in the pocket. You didn't have a full pocket. <laughs> yeah, so it's pretty just good. Just to put that shot in perspective. Yeah, I mean, it's on the highlight reel. It's on there. Don't worry. Should be. <laughs> no, fabulous shot. And looking to break and close the first set here. All you viewers, please uh, make sure you're, you tune in tomorrow because we will have a highlight reel from all the great shots that uh, we've seen today. We list them, they record them, and they put them out for you tomorrow. Nine ball Another is tie break. not really to the rescue. I was going to say might be coming to the rescue here, but it's either the one ball goes or the one nine combo, and you float the one over to the top left corner. called the nine ball. It's funny. Uh, you heard him called the nine. I thought he called an extension. <laughs> Just if you hit it thin, it's going to move really nice to the other corner. If you hit it thick, it might run up to the two ball. Yeah, so he hit it a little thicker and found it again with the cue ball, but worked out really nice. Now that four ball is the only thing I can imagine mm -hmm. causing being a problem. Any work? Yeah, it's it's delicate to lay on the four ball because of the seven, and it's going to be a combo on the eight. Yeah, it's not going to be a straight in combo as well. Right. Well, it's either that or you, if you can get straight on the three ball to the bottom right corner and then you bank the four. That's one of the other options I am thinking about. Just because it's so subtle to get on that combo, it's it's it's. I might it's have tough. to. I might have to yeah. just go for a bank. To get really good on that combo, that seven plays very big, and so does the side pocket. Okay. Well, he's done really nice to get on the three. Oh, he, he can really put himself straight on the bank. Yeah, he's got the perfect angle to come in between the f the four seven hit the rail and come into the seven just a little and be perfect for the four eight combo oh he's going to stop it and did i miss something i guess he was straight in i thought he had a little angle to slide up above it guess not no it's all it's go time here yeah nicely done 
I wasn't sure there was room to go by the sixth. Never considered banking the ball. Queuing over the eight, though. It's not done yet. Yeah. All ball fouls. He touches that eight. John's watching very closely. John Lehman, our head referee. Nice shot. Nice performance by the young man from Switzerland. I mean, he's looking not so nervous yeah. as the beginning. He looks settled. I agree. Still, he is still trailing 3-1. to one. Cannot afford another mistake here. Yes, we'll take a good look at his break if he gets these two balls down. Or should I say once he gets these two balls down? Ooh. Oh, that's a little close. That's a little close. He's got... Oh, and this... It's no gimme, but uh, he's got a good angle for it. But got a little nasty, though. I'm not uh, too sure. It's, it's got real close to the 10. It's close, but he can he can elevate and put a little bit of right-hand English on the ball uh, with the elevation. Yeah, you make it sound really easy that way, George. Um, <laughs> you, you know, if you're at the ball, it... it Looks a lot harder than it is. Let's put it that way. Oh, nice, nice shot there from Michael Oleg. Three, two, Felgorst up, but he's at least giving it a battle. You know, it's not like he's missing open shots and giving Feder easy outs. You know, he's really trying to make it a match. It's well, good to see. Of course, the f the first his first win was a run from the one ball to the ten uh, after that safety on the six. Remember, or was it a two ball? I can't remember which it was. But he ran out the table in perfect control. This one here, he uh, was able to get back to the table and uh, pretty much ran it out. And the only problem he had was getting too close on that 10 ball. But didn't pay it no heed and just fired it in. Now let's take a look at his break. Will he break from the side or from the middle? From the side. Let's see how his difference in the speeds here. All the balls should end up on the left side of the table, with the one or two ball exception, depending on his speed. Oh, he put a lot of spin on the cue ball. It's not something you are looking to do. It takes a lot of impact and power away on the break, the more spin you use. So the only good thing for Mike Miko, sorry, mm -hmm is that the one ball ended up safe, so he's guaranteed to be back at the table at least. I think uh, Federal kicked this uh, softly right into the nine ball and tried oh, to hold the cue ball. He was playing the push. Oh, is he pushing playing push? The okay. Probably the six to the seven, and then get the cue ball behind the four, and then he's going to get the jump cue out. I wonder why. He's got the jump cue in his hand already. Yeah, I wonder <laughs> why. Well, I think we all know at this and point. Now you know the answer to that question. No, he's, it's impressive to see how many jumps he makes. So it's not a coincidence seeing him with the jump cue again. And there he goes. And he so executes perfectly. The only thing, is he still on the two? Uh, I know he not, can he see can the two. But he can bank it. He just might. He might bury the cue ball behind the 6-7, though, if he didn't get on the two ball. Depends if he can see it full. I'm not sure if that purple four isn't in his way. Oh, he can see the full ball. He called the ball two rails to the ooh. side, and it's going to go, ooh. <laughs> I was going to say... I don't know what's worse, making it and then having to kick the three ball from here. Exactly. And uh, it looked like he called it. He kind of nodded down to the side pocket. Um, I don't know if he called it or if he just nodded that, yeah, it'll probably go in there. Because when I shoot shots like that, that's exactly what I think. The last thing I want to do is make it on the side well, right here. It did still end up safe, though. Mm -hmm. And Nico will have to go two rails. Cue ball. But he was kicking the two ball to the open space. So there was yeah. not really many good things that could have happened here. And there wasn't really much else he could do. I 
Okay, better call the bank. Only thing that might be tricky is he's got a little bit more angle on the two. So is he gonna run into the eight? Is he gonna try to run around the three? I think he's gonna or try to Or is he to gonna go run into the three? I think around the three. There you go. Just right there. Perfect. Well, this is far from over yet. Now when he plays the four, he can come into the nine softly. But he will need such a good angle on the four. That's this is the shot. This is where if he, he gets, gets perfect it, yeah. on the four, this is then, where he gets it. then it looks like oh oh this game is extremely easy. And if he gets straight, everybody's gonna say oh he dogged it. Well, he still has to hit that nine ball just right, and he's got the angle he needs. I'm not sure it looks a little straighter. Well, also running into the nine, there is the risk of having the nine coming off the rail and coming between the cue ball and the five. So mm -hmm. there is a couple risks. Have faith, young man. Well, he didn't really play to open it up a lot and still is in a tough position. He's not there yet. No, he's not. That ball's going to come out. Now, now he's trying to see how, how close to the rail he can keep it. I think if he goes out too far, he goes rail first, or he kicks and sticks it behind the seven. Well, it's either you play for the kick and stick, or you bounce off one rail. He's going to fire it. It's not going to get there. Ooh, yeah, he's too short. No, no faith. No faith. That was no. That was that was a lot of angle there. That was just a lot of angle to try to go that far. Well, now because the cloth is super sliding, he doesn't really have to put any speed in this. Just play a little draw. Probably playing arrow of right spin. And there's oh, your he's kick hit and stick. Yeah. Perfect. Yep. Good shot from Federgorst. Young man with a look like a two rail kick from the bottom here to the bottom rail. Yeah, it doesn't look like he can go yeah, around over. the seven and hit one rail. That would be my go to shot if it was possible. Oh sure. Now I am kicking this with quite some speed. I want at least some distance. He called it in that corner. Yeah, the the only thing is is that with this speed his That's what best happens. shot was to make the six. Well, either that or hit it, hit it a little thinner on the right side so it catches the left rail and comes back to the middle of the table. That was the only other option. I was thinking blasted and blasted? create separation. Okay. Yeah. I mean, he was in a tough spot. Yeah. No, no, I, I totally agree. He had to make a very accurate hit on the six ball to have any kind of success. So four balls to go for the Feder Gorst. Looking pretty good so far. Now Tim, there's two ways to play this. How would you how would you play it? Kind of draw it back just a little bit so it comes to the center of the table or follow it two rails? No, I like I like the draw. Okay. But I have a quite short stroke. So okay. I'm I'm quite okay with holding the ball. He will probably like to play two rails like this he because he's got quite okay. a long stroke. Like he yeah, he's he got does. a powerful stroke. So he got a little short though. So he didn't get perfect off it. But more saying, mm -hmm. I think it that one really depends on the style of the technique and and how the player you know, likes to get make the ball. Yeah. I think another thing it depends on is the new use of cloth. Where you can have faith that it's going to, uh, you know, give you the English. Well, and I think it always depends. I mean, to close out the set, set number one. After this shot here, we'll go to Federer Gorst. Four games to two. The young man from Switzerland showed us he can take care of himself, even against the big boys. Was able to pick off two games with two nice runs, some nice settled shots. I think. Yeah, Looks I think settled. both players actually played quite okay. Sure. It's 
So second set here. The U Pro Buried Series is sponsored by Medalla Light Rums of Puerto Rico. And Kamui working together with CSI. Always a great event. And if you look at the numbers, two years ago in the t CSI teams division, they had 50 teams. Mm -hmm. Now, two years later, guess how many teams we have this year? Oh, Ozzy told me this, and it was 148. 148 teams. So almost triple the numbers. Imagine how three years. How important it is to have an event like this and grow pool. Well, actually, by the numbers you just gave us, there was 50 and change, and then there was like uh, 80 and change, or 80, I think, because it was the second year, and now 148. If it doubles again, just think of it. In three in years. In three yeah. years. And the pro event was 64 players. I mean, and you have some nice talent here, and you've got some tournaments that, that have been put on top of this one uh, that, you know, could have, might have cost some other players, but no, here we are. Nice 64-player field. 22-5 well, for the winner. I think it's also nice for the the yeah, top pro players, mm -hmm. you know, because they should be getting known, and people should be asking them for pictures or autographs because, you know, what they're doing is actually really impressive. One of the other things here, you know, Predator being a main sponsor, of course. Uh-oh, cue ball. Yeah, caught that one ball really thick. Was queuing over the three ball, so cutting the one ball in was a tough challenge. And now the only question, and Feder was already looking at it, does that two ball go to the side? Right. And he will need a good angle to at least get down for the three. He could move the six here. He could come into the six, slide off the bottom of it, come over by the nine with the cue ball, have a shot on the three, and open up the two. No, he's going to go ahead and take the two in the side. Oh, I was thinking the three ball. <laughs> yeah, the two ball goes first. Two ball goes first. Yeah. Yeah, I, I got you. <laughs> I got a little ahead of myself there, folks. But Fetter didn't. Fetter knew exactly where he was and what he had to do. That's the main thing. If you guys were here in person, you have some vendors here that have all kinds of nice products. One of the Predator partners is Jam Up Apparel. Great jerseys. Polos and shirts. Yeah, and the more Federer is going to play on the new cloth again. I know he switches around a lot while traveling. You know, mm -hmm. not every pool room or every tournament has the same equipment. But I know he's, for sure, the longer he stays in the tournament, the bigger of a favorite he gets because he just adjusts so well to what he's playing on. Yeah. So if he can get a couple matches like this in, well, he might go for n the win number... Did you say number earlier? three. Number no, no, number, number four. four. It'll be number yeah. four. It'll be the only player. He's got three wins, two in Arizona, one in Ohio. And trying to keep Aloysius Lap Yap from um, from his third win in Ohio. In uh, Michigan. Michigan, yeah. In Michigan. Yeah, what Aloysius Yap did two years in a row is also quite the feat. It was. It is. Well it's held up. He these Aloysius and Federer are, I believe are the only two players that have won two Pro billiards, more than two pro billiards series, or you know, between the two of them, they have five. But I don't think we have multiple winners, other than these two guys. And I watch those numbers pretty carefully, so I might be right. So First game. Yeah, just that scratch was trying to thin the one ball. Michael Oleg left Feder Gorst with a great opportunity. Take the first rack and is on his way to get some dinner, early dinner. Speaking of early dinner, the guys that provide those for us are Predator Group, Kamui Brand, Ramza Puerto Rico, Medalla Light, 
And now I believe we have Samsung TV Plus. This is the third event this year of the Pro Billiard Series. We still have Austria coming up in a, about a month. We'll have the World 8-Ball Championships. And we'll also have the Women's World 10-Ball Championships and the World Junior Championships in Austria in the home of Albin and Jasmine Ocean. Lagenfurt was there last year. And then Puerto Rico comes up in November with the world team events that they had in Austria last year. And what a great event that was. Plenty of pool to be played in the next two months. With this Predator Pro Billiard Series, CSIQ Sports International and Predator bringing you some great pools, some great talent. And here's an up-and-coming player by watching him. Interesting push out. Don't really see many shots. If he cuts the one underneath the three six, there is no way to hide the cue ball. Take the cue ball right into the three, I think. No, he went up there and just well, put it. It needs to stick it. behind it. Well, he's done pretty well. <laughs> just saying, there's so many times where you just hit the edge of the six or hit the edge of the three and it leaks just mm -hmm. enough out to where mm -hmm. you leave an easy save. But this is also what makes Federer world class. These kind of little details. Yes. Hit the six first, pocketed the three unintentionally and gave the ball in hand in the second game of the second set. Mikhail Olek is trying to send this to a shootout. He's got to get four games together before Feder gets the next three. Well, Feder is looking to continue his journey here. Did hit the one ball a little fast, though. He's not happy. Yeah, what do you... <laughs> hit it quite firm, and now we'll have to... Can he stop the cue ball and then slow drag the four ball in and go two wheels to the center of the table? I think it's, it's a little a sensitive shot, though. I think he just might slow roll it to there and then take the cut on the four. But how are you going to get out with the cue ball on this four? A little bit of inside English. Just go up to the top rail and come oh, back to the middle. that is scary. That's scary? Oh, this is super scary. On new club, he might go two rails. I like two rails. Less spin, just top spin. Top spin, just a hair of inside. Okay. Then at least you get to strike the ball. I was thinking maybe... I'd be concerned about like the 10 ball. No, you play with a hair of inside and just top oh, okay. spin. Top spin is going to change the angle also. He looks like he's going low. Yeah, in between the 7 10. Super sensitive stroke, but very, very. He's sensitive. got a quite. He doesn't. He barely touches the ball, and it still smoothens out so much on this sliding cloth. To our other players, they might hit it a little bit firmer, and will not be able to play a cue ball like Correct. this. So it's super sensitive, and he makes it look so easy. It, it he made it look extremely easy, and that was a lot tougher. He manipulated the cue ball around the ten between the seven, yeah, and ten. He and he just pretty much uh, drove it in the right direction. Center of the table here. And then, yeah, he can choose to go twice the long rail. I like going three rails. Yeah, he's, he's looking at the three rails. Just, yeah, just a little shorter than the scratch, obviously, but he's trying to go really close around the corners and not too deep, so just top spin with a hair of right. Not too much, right? That was within a quarter inch of where he pointed that he wanted to hit on the third rail. <laughs> yeah, he just he just seems to struggle a little bit by the speed because as everything is still that new, the rail stages don't give that speed yet to the cue ball, so it really just slides all the speed away. So that's to where he gets a little longer on some shots, but... Well, really, 
of viewers out there, if you want to watch what New Cloth does to the cue ball, just watch it every time it comes off the rail, how flat it comes off. There's no spin on the ball for the first three inches. It looks like a knuckleball. Oh, and he's making quick work here. Well, and Fender has never been one to take too much time. He has a nice rhythm to his to his game and does everything right uh, mechanically. He's the probably the most sound player in the world. Yeah, tough for Mikko Olek to be in his chair. You know, it's it's so tough. You're but playing a race to four. You know, you always have a chance. But then, if you look at how flawlessly your opponent is playing, you know, it's not really motivating. No. Uh, well, the one thing I about it is, I interviewed him prior to the match, and uh, he's just sit there. He says, "Just think of what I'm going to learn playing Feder." Now, that's that's the approach. You know, a lot of players would sit there and say, "I drew Feder. What are my chances?" Or they get excited about, I get to play Feder Gorst, one of the best players in the world. Yeah, m in my opinion, every time you're playing a player from this caliber, you just got to enjoy the road. I mean, Do you think that puts more pressure on the player or takes some pressure off because you're sitting there going, okay, I realistically can't expect to win, but I can expect to get a lot out of this. I think it depends on how much fire you put into it. Mm -hmm. Like if you know, like, mm -hmm. hey, this is, I mean, I'm so not the favorite here, but I'm going to really f dig deep, you know, to still try yeah. and make something happen. Or some people, they already accept beforehand that they will have no shot. Right. They're just going to drill the balls in the, in the rails. The rail, yeah. right. So yeah. They're going to test the rails. It, it's going to depend on, on your your mentality as well. Well, he's got an open shot on the one ball. Two balls out in the middle. Yeah, if he can get uh, to that three ball. And he's going to have to work a little to get to the three ball. He might still be able to play top spin with a hair of inside spin, left spin, mm -hmm. to get in between the three and the nine. If he gets straight on the three ball, the game is wide open. Right. So it is for the taking here. Making sure not to touch that eight ball. All ball fouls. Oh, he did not really strike it with top spin, though. He kind of dipped it a little bit. Yeah. So he did come up a little shorter and does have second prize to shoot the three in the side. The only thing is I don't like to play these kind of shots in the no, side. I've I seen some of them wobble. So Can he get the cue ball down for the four playing the three in the side? He, You know, on this new cloth, he might be able to. With a nice little draw stroke, real smooth, soft draw stroke, I think he can. I, I think he might be able to come down. Just if he comes down four inches or five inches, will be enough to get on this on this four. Oh, he did a good yeah. job there. Yep, he did nice. And that's the thing: if you start to baby it or you are trying to play it too sensitive, now you're gonna miss those kind of shots. He did play it with some authority. Yes, he did. He wasn't afraid of the side pocket, in other words. Yeah, he had some confidence and authority, as you just said. Oh, he took his eye off that ball. And look at this. Look at what happens here with the four ball. It bobbles out of the corner pocket right on top of the 10 for a, for a easy, pretty easy combo on the 10 ball. Yeah, you can play the cue ball safety in mind as well can bring the cue ball back up the table. If you don't make the 4-10, the 4 is still going to stay next to the 9, behind the 6, I'm guessing. So, yeah, kind of a free shot to get yourself it up is. the hill. Uh, I, uh, I I think this is uh, what you might call a high percentage combo. Well, he is looking at cutting the 10 pretty much, though. So, it might look a little easier from our perspective than it is. But he drilled it. Look at look at it, what he has had left on the table if the Not much. 10 wouldn't go Nothing. in. Nothing. So perfect execution. And yep. Feder Gorst is on the hill. Second set.
Yeah, just one mistake basically from Mikkel in mm -hmm. this in this no, set so far. Uh, he's only missed the four and now he's down three zero. I think he's played very well. You put a six sixty one Fargo in against uh, an eight thirty eight, and the intimidation factor of the arena, of the player, um, of the situation at hand. Most of them get intimidated. They, yet that young man looked very calm, cool, and collected. Nerves might have been raging, but it didn't show. Referee John Lehman wrecking the balls for Fredo Gors to break. Yeah, the only thing so far is that I have not seen Fedor make a bunch of balls on the break yet. No, That's he's that might be his only thing after the match that he will probably say, Man, I gotta start I, I need to start making some balls. He broke and ran the first two racks. And well, I don't think I think he's broke dry since. A little bit more squat uh, on the cue ball, but yeah. so many balls got close too. You know, it, that's also momentum. The break is still gambling. Of course, quality does come into play, but there is always a gambling piece involved with the break. You're never guaranteed to make it until it happens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, it has left the jump on for Nicole Oleg. Is a jump you have to take, and I wouldn't care more or less if I would stun the cue ball into the five, or if I hit that ball, I'm happy. Make yeah. one and make sure you get to see the two at some point. Yeah, the two balls by the corner pocket, right underneath him, and Ooh. that's what he had to be afraid of was Just that corner sure pocket. Just make sure you get to see the two. And he's there. I'm sure that's not what he was looking to do. But no, but you know. I think he might still be able to cut the two in and bump the nine and still have the three. I think he might. I think if he makes the two, cue ball goes into the eight. So, uh, tough, tough oh, shape on his three. I think he's playing safe. I think it might be too much. Tough shape yeah. on his three. The only thing, oh, he's left it. Oh, is it going it's in? It's going to go. No. It's not going to go in, but it's going to go in trouble. All right, this is still a tough position on that three ball. Cue ball on the rail. I am not thinking there is a three four combination to the side, so. Uh, I'm thinking just the opposite. So, yeah, jacked up. You need to draw back. Drawing back is the only option he's got here. Oh, yeah, a lot of slide. Straight up shape, huh? Well, and he is a little fortunate to catch that four ball, that little piece. Looked like he was going to end up behind the four. Yeah, it's called a three. You know, I, I, I rarely, rarely question a player's decision. But I looked at that, and I just thought to myself, I'm just going to roll this two ball in, follow it two rails, and take the three-four combo. Yeah, but it looks from just it, it might be super tough. Yeah, it might I be mean, super tough. It might, uh, but from right here, it I, just I looked did like uh, I, did, I, did, I like the control of the shot. I really liked what he was trying to do. Mm -hmm. It's just that you could see that the rails really did slide that much. So now he's gonna go two rails, three rails. Look at this. <laughs> now he's gonna nice he's, he's gonna go hard enough to make sure he makes the ball, and that there's no cut induced spin on that ball. <laughs> No, it was great, great shot, and Good. is ready to seal the deal here. Yeah. Fetter being Fetter and came with a shot. Two wheels forward. Yeah, got a little straighter on the five, so knew he had to settle on a somewhat longer six ball. But then again, the pockets are still grabbing most of the shots just because mm -hmm. of the sliding cloth. And he only needs to stop the cue ball here, so expecting him to be good. And 
Look at the he, cue ball. He delivers that stroke so pure. Just watch his delivery of the stroke, of the cue. Right through the ball with just such precision. Yep, perfect angle on the eight. Go for the nine in the bottom right corner. Yeah, good performance from Fedor here in the first round. Always tough the first round match, but doesn't seem like he has been struggling too much. So mm -hmm. looking forward to see him play again. Look how nicely he came through that ball to go right by the 10 for the straight in position. A little too close to the rail, but he doesn't mind. And two sets in a row to move on to the next match. Fedor Gorst.